Redditors who have walked in on their partner or significant other cheating. What were the next 30 minutes like? Story 1. I didn't walk in on it happening, but I saw it coming and did everything I could to stop it, including telling my girlfriend that if the woman I suspected her having a thing with came to my apartment when I wasn't there, it was over between us. She constantly told me nothing was happening between them, so I gave her the benefit of the doubt. When I was out of state for a funeral a week later, I went through the Google Home app and noticed recordings of the Google Home speaker being used after midnight. I listened to them, and heard the recordings of my now ex-girlfriend and the other woman using my Google Home. I came back home four days later, had this on my chest for four days, and asked my girlfriend as we laid in bed next to each other if anyone came to the apartment while I was gone. She looked me in the eyes and said no. I said, again, was, girl's name, in my apartment while I was home for a funeral? She continued looking me in the eyes, laying inches away from me, and said no. I picked up my phone and played the Google Home recording, and asked her, then who the fuck is this? She was a deer in the headlights. She couldn't speak for five minutes. I told her she was a liar, a manipulator, and a fucking coward, and told her to get the fuck out. Story 2. Not quite the ask, of course, but similar. My ex always stayed up way later than me because of his shift patterns, so I'd gone to bed around midnight and he was up watching TV. For whatever reason, I couldn't sleep well that night and was in and out for a couple of hours. About 2 a.m., I hear the bedroom door slowly open and I'm about to ask him if he's coming to bed when I realize he's just standing there in the doorway. I'm guessing he couldn't see that I was awake in the darkness. Then he inches the door shut so it doesn't make a noise. I hear him put on his shoes and the front door slowly, carefully open and close. He came back around 4 a.m. to find me sitting on the sofa and just about shat his pants that I was awake. I just knew and his reaction confirmed it. We broke up that night but he was never brave enough to admit to that occasion of cheating or the dozens more that came before it. That I had to find out from others. Then because we just signed a tenancy agreement, I had to live with him for almost a full year. Best. Year. Ever. Story 3. This was so long ago that it is almost funny to think about because it made me a better person. I truly believe that. In college, scumbag boyfriend's ex-girlfriend was in town and we were all at a party together. They were from the same hometown and had a lot of mutual friends. I got too drunk and left, he told me he was staying and would come over in an hour. I had a lot of friends, there too who were keeping an eye out. I get home and immediately get a call from a friend that they snuck off together to his apartment. We lived in the same complex so it was about a 4 minute walk away. I sprinted back to his place, my best friend sprinting after me, walked into his room to see them. Best friend runs in and punches the girl in the face. All pretty much a blur after that. Some yelling, crying, punching a wall, then just went home and cried a bunch. About 10 years later, wouldn't trade it for anything. Sobering experience and made me stronger. Story 4. God I hope I can get through this. I honestly thought I was in a great relationship with my so. One day after work, instead of heading home I headed to her place to surprise her. She's a quiet fucker so I didn't hear anything until I got to her bedroom. And there she was, fucking the supposedly really gay roommate. They didn't even notice me just standing there for a solid 5 minutes. Until he looked at me and stopped she was about to say something to him when she noticed me too. It was pretty awkward for a couple of minutes. I think I blanked out. I looked around and saw the picture of me and her on the nightstand. I went and grabbed it and was looking at it. Me? How long? He tried to get his clothes on and I looked him dead in the eyes me. You're in this too. So accept your shame and sit there. He did what I said and my GF pulled the sheet over herself me, how long? GF, baby, I can explain. I looked at her and I don't know if she saw rage or pain, but she stopped and stared at the ground. GF, a week. Me, a week, what? GF, baby, can we just? I lost it. Me, a week fucking what? GF, a week after he moved in. She had been cheating on me for over three months. I remember putting the picture of us down again and getting to her front door. I don't remember the three hours I roamed the streets just totally out of it. My phone had died so I grabbed a cab that was driving by and went home. Have to admit that this was by far the hardest thing to write. Made me relive the moment again. But fuck it needed to be said. Story 5. Was on a brunch date after staying the night at her place. Some Irish dude was flirting with her while we hadn't drank. I got up to take a shit and smoke a cig. I'm halfway through my smoke when she walked out the door holding hands with the dude from the bar. I wasn't even mad. Even waved as she left. I calmly sent a text saying we were done, which she didn't respond to until the next day. Apparently, I was overreacting, according to her. I laughed hung up on her, then left to join my friends on the week-long camping trip we had planned. You did not overreact. Either she was cheating or trying to make you jealous. Either way it's a messed up thing to do and you deserve better. Thank you. I know both of these which is why I wasn't mad. Not worth losing my head over. And. You are right. Her ex-GF was a friend of mine before I ever dated her. The ex said she often used. Jealousy as a weapon in a conversation we had after the fact. Edit. It was also definitely cheating. She didn't see my text because she was busy screwing him. Story 6. Wife of 6 years got a new job in medical device sales and was out of town for 3 weeks straight for training. The first two weeks went okay but she had never traveled before so it was difficult on both of us. I have several friends who work in the industry, and they all pretty much paint the same picture lots of alcohol, lots of hooking up. It's okay, not my wife. She would never, but the next time we spoke she could tell something was wrong. She had been talking about this guy quite a bit in our conversation so I asked about him. Oh he's nobody, just another rep from another state and training with her. Regardless, that afternoon I got a text from him, explaining that my wife had told him that I was asking about him, and he decided to text me to reassure me that he was married, had three kids, nothing was going on. I bought it, and then... The night before she comes home, it happens. 4 a.m. I get a phone call from her, but in my slumber I sent it to voicemail. She was absolutely wasted and had drunkenly dialed my phone instead of his and left a voicemail. The voicemail consisted of explicit details of their sexual encounters that week and since they will be traveling together in the future, the continuation of more sexual encounters were promised, including details on how she loved it when he did X to her Y and Z. I got out of bed, 
walked down the hallway to our daughter's rooms, two and four at the time, grabbed both of them and brought them to bed with me. I held them tight while they slept on each side of me, while I cried the remainder of the night, not for me, but for them because their world was going to get turned upside down in less than 12 hours from now. I then got out of bed, logged onto her computer and, after a little investigative sleuthing, I forwarded every I message, every picture as well as the voicemail she drunkenly sent me to his wife. Edit, first of all, thank you for the support fellow Redditors. This happened a while ago and I've moved on. It still hurts, I still haven't come to trust anyone fully yet, but really I have no interest. I'm only 36 so I'm just having fun working on being a better me. Regarding paying support even though she makes twice I do, I pay support because it's my duty to my kids, regardless what she makes. I'm not hurting for cash, not by any means, and neither is she. And yes, the court system is heavily flawed and biased towards mothers. In cases like this, the girl should be living with me. Update. Wife gets home the next day, at this point she doesn't know I know yet, but she is obviously stressed about something. Hmm, I wonder what that could be. To me, there was a lot at stake. We had just built a new house, had two daughters, dog, everything. We closed on our house, I had to get power of attorney to sign for her, while she was gone for training and I moved us into the new house. She left one address and came home to a totally different one. I go about my business like nothing has happened, unpacking boxes, etc. just waiting to see how many lies I can catch her in. Also, my divorce attorney said that the worst thing I could do was leave, as that could be considered abandonment. I needed to make the absolute best case I could for my daughters. About a week goes by and I have caught her and documented dozens of lies. I also have found new reason to believe that he wasn't the first and only now. All of a sudden, out of the blue, she gets a call from his wife. I have never seen someone go that white that quick. She was fucking frozen with fear when she answered. I told her that she messed up the best thing to ever happen to her. She had it all. Adoring husband, two wonderful kids, a beautiful home and a successful career. And she threw it all away to fuck some douchebag from New York because she got caught up in the money and the atmosphere. She cried, I cried, and when I told her I was leaving her she locked herself in her car and cried for about an hour. Her rebuttal was that she loved me and we could work it out. The best part was that since her job was all about character and perception and how her physician saw her, that getting a divorce because she cheated on me with a co-worker in the first few weeks of her new job would tarnish her character. She was so worried about perception and how she would be looked at in her new role, completely glossing over the damage she did to me, herself, and most importantly our daughters. That did it for me. I was out. He was fired from the job from his conduct. She should have been too in all honesty. Last I heard is that his wife left him, took the house, the kids, everything. I fought and fought and fought for my kids. She was suffering depression, was a borderline alcoholic and she traveled overnight on average 150 nights a year. Everything that those girls didn't need to be around. But being the father, I already had that going against me and the court still sided with her. The girls live with her in the same house I moved her into. I make great money, but I couldn't afford that place on my own anyway and figured it would be best to try to keep things as normal as possible for them. I get to see them every day when I pick them up from school and when she is traveling. She makes double what I do, yet I still pay her child support. It's a wonderful world. Story 7. She left her FB open on my laptop I let her use for school. Four years and an engagement. During the affair I paid her taxes and paid to remove her wisdom teeth all while she fucked the guy I didn't need to worry about in our bed. In our room I paid rent for. It really felt like getting hit by a bus. I couldn't breathe, threw up multiple times, and finally slept when I passed out drunk. Why do I click on threads like these? I'm so afraid to trust anyone man I don't know how I'd react to something like this but I know it would fuck me up and I'd be an emotional wreck and I'm so afraid of that. Honestly after my second time being cheated on I am pretty sure I just can't love anymore, and it actually is comforting knowing I can never get hurt that bad again. Because I can never feel that good again smile. Story 8. I was at work. We worked together and the other woman also worked there. I'm in commission sales and had a customer waiting at my desk. I calmly told my boyfriend that it was over, went to my manager's desk and told him what happened, dealt with my customer. Didn't close the deal, but there was no deal to close even before the altercation. Then I went to the gym because if I went home, I would have attempted suicide. Did not attempt suicide, got super hot instead. Transferred locations a few months later because of the random crying. I still cry when I think about it and that was 4 years ago. Story 9. I didn't walk in, but I was helping her study and grabbed her phone from between us to google something. I was immediately greeted with a long string of explicit texts with her just friend. Dot I set her phone down and left without a word. I sat in the fetal position beside my car in the parking deck for a good hour before I could even process it. We broke up later that day, she married him less than a year later, and they're divorced now. No happy endings for anyone in that story. Story 10. His side chick called me on a Friday afternoon to let me know she was pregnant. She had turned 18 months before, and was still in high school. He and I were 30. She was very proud of herself, letting me know she would be moving into his home when she told him the great news. I was so shocked that I politely congratulated her. I really just couldn't process the information for the duration of the phone call, which lasted less than three minutes. And yes, she spoke like your stereotypical ill-mannered redneck princess. I was active duty at the time and stationed in Georgia, near the Alabama state line. He was a fairly good mechanic, and a member in a local MC. I drove to his place, and made myself at home like I usually did on the weekends. We'd been dating for over a year, so I stopped at the grocery store on the way to pick up stuff for dinner. He came home to a steak dinner, and me doing paperwork at the coffee table. He asked me what I was working on. I told him that I was working out his financial solvency for the next 18 years. Ooh, yes, see, that white trash you've been putting it to? She's about to drop a litter for you. Big guy. I wonder will your brothers in the MC be alright with you sporting your colors for her prom? Of course he didn't say anything. He finished his meal while I worked out the numbers, and, neatly, packed my things I had been keeping there. I had finished doing up his accounts by the time he had put my things in my car. I loved up on his puffers, and handed him his budget. 
Blue folder will show you my math for your personal finances. You're fucked within a year of her giving birth, because this county says she now can lay a claim against the property this house is built on. The green folder is for your shop. Interesting stuff, Einstein. If you're gonna scam on your taxes, make sure your girlfriend isn't an accounts auditor. Or better yet, don't stick your dick in fertile crazy. I've already emailed this to the fraud division of the IRS. Tell the boys at the clubhouse you can't be there tonight. You need to go over to that girl's house and try to come up with a plan that won't completely fuck that. Kid she's going to spawn for life. And that if you ever date a woman out of your league again, please remember not to insult her by stepping out on her with cheap trash. If you plan to cheat, you move up the ladder, not down. Hope she was a great lay, dude. Because it's gonna cost you a couple hundred grand over the next decade if she's as pro-life as you are. In the 90 minutes I was in that house while he was home, he spoke a total of 15 words. Tops. I later found out his MC kicked him out for trying to bring her to the clubhouse for open events after they banned her for underage drinking. And sure enough, she got him taken to court for his house. It's been 10 years since all this happened, and it still irks me that I got cheated on with white trash. I might be a New York 5 and an LA 3, but I'm a goddamn Columbus, got 10. Story 11. Pretty much found out when there were condoms on the nightstand and used ones in the trash bin. It's not like we were using them together because we are both females. She came home from wherever she was and I put everything in the living room so she would see it as soon as she walked in. So she walked in the front door, saw tears down my face, looked at the stuff and then just walked back out. The next 30 minutes were filled with tears, packing my stuff up, and getting the next flight to Washington. Story 12. I cracked the plaster on the wall with the back of my head. She said she was sorry, so sorry, that she didn't want it to end things between us. I told her to leave, she eventually did. That, was the first time we broke up. Strangely, the others weren't as bad, because I had already been through it. Still bad. But the final straw made it very easy to walk away. I worked for a few months, saved everything I could, then moved across the country. The last text I got from her was, where are you? We need to talk. I'm coming over. Everyone's telling me you moved but I know they're lying. I never have snappy comebacks and I never get revenge. But tapping the word California into my cheapy Nokia, and then sending it from the sunny streets of Venice to the icy winter hell of Minnesota is one of the best feelings I have ever had, after being hurt. It all started to get better from there. She married an idiot knuckle-dragging caveman misogynist. She saw me on a TV show once, and sent me a picture of herself in an effort to smooth things over. Time had not been kind. Story 13. I also didn't actually walk in on anything. I knew there was a guy that she texted back and forth which a bit. I had asked about it but she always wrote it off with a variety of excuses and I didn't push it because I thought that I should actively trust my wife. One day she went out to lunch with her sister who came into town. I just got a strange feeling that I needed to look at her laptop. The first email I saw was a flight confirmation to where he lived. Then I found the record of their Facebook video chats which were all followed by I love you back and forth. My first reaction was to try and find a reasonable explanation. Once I quickly realized that there wasn't one I didn't know what to do at all. I slammed the laptop, felt bad for slamming it because I knew the hinge was already in bad shape. I started pacing around my apartment running my hands through my hair. I knew that was cliche but I didn't know any way to express what was inside so I think I defaulted to what I knew. I texted her and told her that she needed to come because I wasn't okay. When she came and she hugged me and asked what was wrong. I still wanted to believe that it was all a misunderstanding so I asked about the flight and why she hadn't told me. She knew she was caught and basically sat there while I yelled for a while. Eventually, I couldn't take her not saying anything so I left to take the dog out and tried to calm down. Story 14. It was like time stopped like in a Wes Anderson movie, everything was slow motion. He was passed out naked in his bed with some chick who told me to close the door. His housemate was rambling something frantically in front of me but I was not there. I remember getting into the car and driving to a park, sitting in the driver's seat until I burst into tears. It was incredibly disassociated. It broke my heart but I wasn't conscious when it happened. I related to a deep cut. There is a few moments of nothing until the blood starts to pour out uncontrollably and the excruciating pain starts. Story 15. Fun story I'm a bit late to the party but I'll share anyway. Had a buddy that I had not seen for a while come to town. We were going to meet up and go drinking but I ended up having to close because someone called in sick. Buddy goes out and parties all night. I tell him to call if he needs a ride. Get the call at about 3am to come get him at some chick's house. He gives me the address and it's my girlfriend's address. She lives with her sister so I thought he went home with the sis. I walk in the house and head to my SO's bedroom and guess who's there. My buddy. Should have seen the look on her face it was priceless. Buddy asks what's going on. I tell him let's go and tell her to kindly fuck off. She's crying and buddy is starting to get the picture. Tell him she was my girlfriend. Of about 5 months. He feels terrible and is apologizing profusely. I tell home where even if he buys me breakfast. So we go get breakfast. I look at it as he did me a favor, nothing to feel bad about. TLDR, caught my buddy diddling my girlfriend, made him buy me breakfast. Story 16. Not the crazy story others have but, went to visit her on my lunch break while she was visiting her family. I was in high school at the time and we had been dating for almost a year, so it might inform the story later. Her mother informs me she's at a friend's house up the street, so I go and check. It's the guy I have suspected for a while, and I ask if she's there. She answers the door in a skimpy tank top and short shorts and immediately starts crying when she sees me. I walk away, not even being bothered to care at this point since it has been building for like three months. She follows, crying, telling me it isn't what it looks like, and at one point falls down into the grass. I walk to my car and tell her she has one hour to drop off everything my family has let her use slash given her before she will vacate her stuff from my house, and I drive home. She shows up, gives over everything including car keys, house key, and other items. Her family sucked, I was basically supporting her distancing herself from them. She leaves and I take the rest of the day off in a haze. That's about the end. I am kind of a distant person in general, so the emotional part wasn't the biggest issue until it hit later in the day. Story 17. 
This is a little confusing due to how many people involved. I'll try to make it easy. So I wasn't the one that walked in on them. It was the drummer of my band. He was living with the guy my GF cheated on me with. He, drummer, called me and told me, then said I'm on my way to your apartment to pack up your stuff. I contacted my mom and told her I'd need to move back home for a little bit. She was more than happy. She hated my GF. So while my GF was still sleeping in bed with her fuck buddy, I was home packing up everything. Best part was, she didn't have a job. So it was literally everything. I had it all moved out before she even got home. She had no idea why I moved. Because unknown to her and her FB, my drummer was there the whole time. His car was at the shop so someone else brought him home. They thought he was gone for the night. Long story short, she started dating an even different guy a few weeks later and called me drunk one night asking me to sleep with her. I didn't, but I made sure word got to her new BF. Also, our favorite TV show together was Lie to Me. So I made sure that when I moved out, I hid all the DVDs of the show around the apartment for her to find. That alone made me feel a little better. Story 18. I didn't walk in on my ex. We had been having a rough few months because she was struggling with pain pill addiction. Our neighbor had asked if they could have a girls night out and hit the casinos and some bars. They all got drunk and met a couple of guys. My wife decides at that point she is done with me and our three very young kids, youngest was 10 months old, leaves the bar with this new guy that she had met two hours prior. My neighbor calls me at 1.30 AM to tell me they have lost her and can't find her or the two guys she left with. The neighbor is crying on the phone. I am beyond pissed but completely helpless at this point because I have to be at work at 4.30 AM. I was worried because I was concerned for her well-being as she left with men she didn't know. It was a mess. I called my mom to come watch my kids so I could go to work. I ended up not going to work. I don't remember crying as our relationship was dying and I knew I couldn't save it. She came home the next day and we made it work for a few years after that, but I could never get past that night and she was still struggling with addiction so I let her go and my kids and I have seen her probably twice since she walked away. Life has only gotten better since we split. Her addiction made me think like an addict too and I absolutely hated it. Story 19. Wasn't a walk-in but I still love telling this story because in hindsight it's pretty fucking funny how horrendous this situation was. Was on and off with someone for years, she had commitment issues, to me at least lol. All of a sudden we are talking more often for a few weeks, she seems more serious and wants to take a trip with me. We take a ferry ride out to this secluded island off the west coast of Florida to camp for a few days. Has a beach and bike trail. Second day we're there, I get a really long text from some random number and it turns out she's been fucking her ex, guy she was dating in between our on and off, while talking to me. What's worse, she got him to watch her dog while her and I were on this trip. He was suspicious about how she had been acting so he went through her texts on her MacBook and found out she was with me. Believe it or not, it gets even worse. The ferry that took us to this island wouldn't be back for another full 24 hours. So we had to stay another night there. I got bitten up by bugs that night and then we awkwardly packed up all our shit the next afternoon and drove two hours back home together the next day hardly speaking in that period. She dropped me off and drove to deal with her ex and I never spoke to her again. Silver lining, I'm now happily married to the love of my life and it's definitely not this woman. Story 20. Kinda late to the party but here's my story. Was with my girlfriend for three and a half years. She spent a weekend with her friend. I trusted her because at the time it was my longest relationship and I didn't have a reason not to trust her. I didn't walk in on her but one day she mentioned how she wanted to go see him again. That next morning I said hey can I use your phone to call my dad. Mine is messing up I went through her messages and he said I love the way you blew me. Along with a bunch of other stuff. I walked back in the room, woke her up and said we're done. I felt shitty at first for going through her phone cause it was wrong. Then went to my best friend's house and got drunk and played video games. It was actually a pretty fun day after that. My ex before that cheated on me with a roommate we had move in with us. I was downstairs watching TV and heard them in the bedroom. I knocked on the door and she pretty much told me to fuck off. I moved out the same day into my friend's place. Got drunk and played video games. Every girlfriend I've ever had has cheated on me. Video games haven't though. Story 21. I never walked in on her, but I found out she'd been cheating on me when she was upstairs taking a shower. Her other boyfriend sent her a text and it flashed up on the screen, and I saw enough to know. I had about 15 minutes to sort it. I quite angrily piled up all her stuff and got angrier and angrier. She came downstairs and was surprised to see me so angry, I am a very, very calm person. I told her to remove everything of hers within a week and she didn't then I'd no longer be responsible for it. I later found out that that was the second guy she'd cheated on me with. Strange thing is, out of all my exes, she's the only one I'm still in contact with. Story 22. Didn't walk in. Caught him leaving as I went over the next morning to drop something off. She was in her skimpy nightwear kissing him goodbye. First thing that actually flashed across my mind was I gotta get out of here or shit's gonna go down. I was suddenly aware how I have anger issues, and that got a concealed carry license, and that I was carrying a loaded gun at that very moment. Looked at his smug face, looked at her panicked face, looked at his smug face again, turned and left, climbed on my bike and sped off. I never rode as fast, as recklessly or as furiously as that time. I actually think I was trying to kill myself. I did crash the bike. I was in such a murderous rage that I kept thinking faster for some reason. I entered a curve way too fast and slipped while leaning slash trying to make it. I got up, realized I was fucked up, then kept walking into the middle of nowhere. I sat in a clearing and remained there until a policeman found me. I told him what had happened and handed him my gun, telling it was best he had it because I felt the thing was demanding to be used, it was just my anger, at the time. Police officer was sympathetic, drove me to the hospital and called a tow for the bike. The ride to the ER I got to chatting with he and his partner. Ten minutes go by and we are all laughing our asses off lost in random conversation. Me and those guys are good friends to this day and in many shenanigans we have been involved since. Regarding her, I never bothered to check. Story 23. Drove home from work at 2am because I knew what was happening, but she didn't know I knew. Walked in, tossed my keys down, walked in and said you stupid idiots and they both shot up. She hid in the bathroom and I told him it was best be left. 
Then I explained to her why she was a stupid idiot, walked out the door and went back to work. The whole ride back, about 20 minutes, I was just trembling with anger. I got back to work, night audit at a hotel, so completely by myself, and just started crying and hitting shit. It was rough but it got better as time went on. This was like 5 months ago. Just something else to add to the fuck it bucket. Since then I've moved to a new city and am enjoying life more than ever. Put the playlist in the background to finish listening to all the stories linked at the top of the description. Thanks a lot for watching. See you next time.